to AKC Live, bringing you the latest dog news and entertainment from the American Kennel Club. I'm Sam Ryan, and my co-host today, look at this handsome guy, the beautiful Bodie. Hi, Bodie. Shake? Yeah, good to meet you. Bodie's going to be us, here with us throughout the show today. Very well behaved. We'll talk about him in just a little bit, but today's show is about dogs who dazzle, and our next guest, Bill Berloni, has a lot to do with that, he trains dogs for television, movies, and theater. And my co-host Bodie is Bill's dazzling canine. <laughs> so welcome to both of you, Bill and Bodie. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us, Sam. Okay, so first of all, so you train dogs for mm -hmm. shows, for theater, for movies. The first dog you trained was Sandy for the show Annie. Tell yeah. me about that, about that process, and was there any thought in not using an animal? Oh, actually, um, it's quite a story because uh, I never wanted to be an animal trainer. I always wanted to be an actor. And I was working as an apprentice at the Goodspeed Opera House, a small theater in Connecticut. And that's where they premiered the, the musical Annie. And the script had a dog in it. And at first, they found out dog trainers were too expensive from New York. And ev then everybody on the paid staff threatened to quit. So they needed a sucker to trick into training the dog. And so <laughs> they called me into the yeah, office. So you were the sucker. I okay. was the sucker, 19 years old. And they offered me a part in one of the shows if I would find and train a dog for no money for the new show. And of course, I said yes. Um, and I heard they had cheap animal, uh, animals at the animal shelter. And I went to the Connecticut Humane Society, found the original Sandy for $7, and trained him as I had trained all my pets growing up. I grew up on a farm, so I had lots of pets. And, uh, and the next thing I knew, a year later, the show opened on Broadway, and I was a world-famous animal trainer at the age of 20. And you had no professional I had no experience. training, right? No. Nope. That's awesome. And you said the real Andy, the original, the, yep. the original the Sandy. The original, yes. The original Sandy. Annie. Yep. That's fascinating. He, um, he went on to do 2,333 performances. He was the longest running animal on Broadway, performed for eight years um, doing the show. So um, he was quite a special dog. How long did you work with him? I, well, I, he lived with me uh, for his entire life and he uh, went into retirement. So he was with me the whole time. Good. So how does an animal enhance a performance or a show? What, what's interesting about my career especially is that um, Annie was the first show that had an animal as a live character. Now, a lot of shows had animals as props, you know, mm -hmm. um, Gypsy or Oliver. The, these are live theater shows. But Annie's uh, character, Sandy, actually moved the plot forward. It explained how those three characters met. And no one told us you couldn't depend on a dog to do something eight times a week, but nobody had tried it before. So I came up with a method that was positive and fun, and the animals will do it eight times a week. So I've done 27 Broadway shows, and it's um, what pe when people come and they see an animal on stage, your first thought is, oh my god, what is it going to do? And yet they work flawlessly, do the behaviors, and people enjoy the story. So it really brings the audience to a new level of excitement when watching a live theater show. You know, it's interesting you talk about the dependability. Yeah how much trust is involved on both sides. You know, the animal must trust you and you must mm -hmm. trust the animal, as well as the actors. Yep. Um, what, what people don't recognize, actually, is that you know, when we do films, I can be behind the camera as the trainer, telling the dog what to do, and it looks like he's relating to mm -hmm. the actors. But on stage, he, the dog can't be looking in the wings at me. So right. we have to take the lead actors or the actors working with the animals and turn them into trainers. Not just in terms of how to give commands, but bond them. The dogs really have to like them as much as they like us to perform at that same level um, on stage for someone else. So it's a, again, so my training isn't just me with the dog, it's me, the dog, and a third person creating a performance. Does a dog ever have a rough, pardon the pun, night? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? It, when, it, when something's fun, they always want to do it. But then if something distracts them, or an actor forgets a line, or there's a noise backstage, or literally during the performance of Legally Blonde, the musical on Broadway, there were people in the front row eating fried chicken. Okay. I mean, yeah. so the animals are the most dependable things. It's when humans interrupt them. So Bodhi right here is a star and is set to star in because of Winn-Dixie, which is currently in development. Was there any other casting, or was Bodhi just right for the role? Um, there was other casting, actually. And uh, the project's being produced. It was conceived and produced by my wife, Dorothy. Um, we always had hoped that we would have an animal play a main character, and we couldn't wait for Lassie the musical any longer. So she acquired the rights to the book. She put the creative team together. And uh, at first, we had Deerhounds, which is what 
uh, were on the cover of the book because the dog's supposed to be a large dog. Mm -hmm. um, they were too flighty. And then we adopted two Irish wolfhounds who loved the kids in the show. But when they got to performance, actually were like, ah, I'm kind of lazy. I think I'm going to just lay down here. So I needed a dog with a little more drive, a little more um, intensity. And so we went, did another nationwide search for a retriever Labrador type personality in a big dog's body. And we found Bodhi uh, up for adoption in uh, Utah. Uh, family was giving him up because he was too much, too much for them to handle. And uh, he's proven to be just right for the role. And Bodhi is five years old now, he's, but you talk about the role, yeah. about 80 minutes. So yes. Bodhi's on for 80 minutes. How challenging is that? It's, it's actually, um, it's quite challenging and it's the culmination of 40 years worth of work. Uh, Sandy had seven cues in Annie and he was on stage for 13 minutes. Okay. And so fast forward to everything I've learned and now he's, his, the last production he did had 105 cues and he was on stage a total of 80 minutes. Um, and it was great because the audience got so used to him being there when he was off stage. They, they really cared, where's Winn-Dixie? So, I mean, it proves that you can have an animal on stage um, and really hold an audience's uh, attention. Can you give us a demo? Can you show us a demo? Oh, absolutely. Can um, you Bodie? Yeah? You know, I, people say to me, what, what sort of tricks do they do? And actually, they, you know, they don't do tricks because they're actually actors. So we have to create behaviors to show emotion, to tell a story. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, they're not as spectacular as jump, jumping through hoops because that, that's just fun to look at. Well, I think he's spectacular. Um, <laughs> so, um, Bodhi, come here. Good boy. Yep, I know she dropped some crumbs there before. I know. Bodhi. <laughs> so, um, obviously actors can't um, command the character because we want it to look like they're interacting for the first time. So a lot of things are hand signals. Okay. Um, so in the wings, if I wanted him to sit, I could point my finger. Bodhi. Good boy. Okay. If I wanted him to lay down, you know, wave our hands. Bodhi. Up. Good boy. You know, if we wanted him to look sad, head down. Oh. So we have to create behaviors that um, head down, show emotion. Bodhi, over. If we want him to look like he's going to go to sleep. I mean, so these are all things that whether I'm doing them in the wings from afar or the actor is actually doing, um, we put all these behaviors together. Bodhi, up. Um, when we need him to attack somebody, you know, you put your hands up and he'll, he'll jump up on you. If you're talking, um, all you have to do is nod your head. Bodhi. So you can have an actor say, how are you today? And have it look like he's actually, actually answering. Um, hand signals like covering his eyes and then stay. So an actor can do that and walk away, you know. Um, or if they're walking, touching his back means stand stay. So it'll look like he's stopping for some reason. So again, okay. we have 30 of, of these sort of behaviors in which we use them to story tell, you know. Does he know who to listen to? Um, he knows who to listen to because we've rehearsed for, you know, uh, hundreds of hours um, to get him used to the actress okay. or me. And actually for Winn-Dixie, uh, there's two trainers. We have one on each side of the stage. I'm one of them and the actress. So there's three people at all times commanding him to do the behaviors. Great job, Odie. Great job. Shake. Oh. Shake. You gotta shake? Shake. There you go. He's comfortable now. I, he says, I gotta sit yes, up. Yes, there's my shake. Right. <laughs> you did a great job. Where, where else can we see Bodhi? Um, great job. While Bodhi's waking, waiting to make his Broadway debut, um, he's a regular on Sesame Street. He's on Elmo's World. He plays really? Schnoodle the Poodle. Um, he's done episodes on this series High Maintenance. He's done commercials. So he's doing a lot of film work. In fact, he's going to make his movie debut in a new movie. Um, he plays Julianne Moore's dog in a movie called um, After the Wedding, which is coming out next year. You are a star. And can you tell us when we can see Bodie and Winn-Dixie? We have Where? one more. Uh, we've done three out-of-town tryouts. We have one more big out-of-town tryout next, next year and hopefully Broadway in the fall of 2019. Well, thank you so much, Bill and Bodie. Thank you. You're, You're going to stay with me throughout the show, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Well, time now for this week's fun fact. Did you know that the star of the film, because of Win Dixie, was a Berger Picard? Many assumed it was a mix because of its shaggy appearance. The Berger Picard is famed for its endearing smile and spirited expression. 
Well, talk about dazzling. How about dazzling in the ring? Time to meet a young, energetic corgi who shows off her flashy moves with a frisbee. Princess Zelda certainly reigns supreme. Hey there, sports fans. If you thought Ultimate Frisbee was cool, Over the leg. you ain't one. seen nothing yet. Remember, make, make some noise. Make some, make some, make some noise. So this is Zelda, she's nine months old. She was an owner surrender for having too much energy. She was destroying the house. I'm a trainer, so they surrendered her to me, and she's been my baby ever since. It's Zelda got it. She just had that natural drive. Uh, she was given to her other family to be a potential service dog, and unfortunately, she just had too much drive for it. She was too crazy. We decided to add her to our pack, and it was the best decision we've ever done. So what's the secret behind these flashy moves? Basically, it's training tricks, um, and then we put it into a routine. So we have like our spin, or, and then they catch a frisbee. So instead of giving uh, treats after a trick, we just give them a frisbee, and that's their treat because they love the disc so much. Kick throw, not an easy throw. As it turns guys. out, it takes a village to catch a frisbee. We do frisbee for the behavior dogs. It gets their energy out. Um, we practice every week with our dogs. We have a club uh, here in Houston. And as crowd pleasing as these tricks are, there's even better magic happening behind the scenes. It has changed my life. It gave her this outlet and it gave us a way to bond. And like I noticed a whole change in her behavior. And so it's just a way for us to go out and have fun with our dogs. And as you can see, she's been very happy after playing frisbee. If you were wondering, Princess Zelda is a Nintendo character, uh, this one. We have her custom collar with a little sword on it and everything, because she's Princess Zelda. Well, we're meeting dogs who dazzle. Now we learn about a special dog who dazzles by bringing a young Michigan boy out of a shell and helping him gain confidence. 13-year-old Spencer Party was diagnosed with high-functioning autism at a young age and would keep to himself until Teddy came along. Now Teddy's the Party family standard poodle who now works with Spencer and the two have earned many titles together over the years. And with that, we welcome in Spencer, Teddy, and Spencer's mom, Terry Party. Thank you guys for joining us. And first of all, Terry, how would you describe Spencer's personality and demeanor before Teddy came to the family? Um, very withdrawn, um, lacked confidence, um, hesitant in social situations to talk or even to stand or to go maybe in a store over to the next aisle. So what made you believe that a dog could make a difference? Uh, I grew up with dogs. So I've had dogs all my life. I've seen what they were, could do. I was a high school counselor and used a dog to help get through to kids that, that we as people couldn't. Um, and so I was just hopeful that a dog would be a friend for Spencer when he was feeling so isolated. What did you notice early on after bringing Teddy home? We see them right now sitting next to you <laughs> and uh, they both look so comfortable, but what did you notice early on? I did 4-H as a 4-H leader in our local community so that my son could have experience showing the dog. And he would sit under the tree holding onto a flexi lead, uh, but he wouldn't put a dog on the end. At the time, we had an older golden retriever, and he was afraid to put the dog on the end. And so I was teaching all these kids, um, but my own son that I was doing it for um, was afraid to have a dog on the end. And so at first with Teddy, when we went to the breeder to, to get Teddy, he was... Spencer was hesitant and didn't want to touch the dog or didn't warm up to the dog right away. Um, but as Teddy became more a part of our family, uh, he wiggled himself into Spencer's heart and they became best of friends. You say best of friends now. What's the biggest difference that you see in Spencer? I truly can't even put it in a couple of words. Um, he went from sitting those days under the, the tree at the park for the 4-H classes just holding a flexi to um, being able to go to the Junior Classic uh, in Orlando and showing uh, Teddy in obedience and in rally and taking second place. And that's been a real hall hallmark for Spence. And he'll say, well, I can do this. Like if he needs to give a, a talk at Sunday school or speak to a group of people, he'll say, I can do this. After all, I can do Orlando. I can do this. And so it's just, it's changed his world. He can take Teddy into a store and go in any aisle the store he wants to or go up and talk to strangers that will ask about Teddy. Um, it's it's a, whole different, a whole different child. Wow, well Spencer, that is awesome. Second place in Orlando. Congratulations 
on your many titles with Teddy, including tracking obedience, rally, junior showmanship. So what is your favorite activity to do with Teddy Spencer? I don't know. I enjoy every, all the activities that I do with him just for the sake of doing it with him. He's a really nice dog, and you know, as if I can do something with him, then I'll take the opportunity to do it. I don't really so, have a favorite. I just enjoy it all. So you enjoy the time spent with Teddy, but when you go back in time and you think about when you first got Teddy, what do you remember? Um, not very much. It was a while ago, but I do remember that, you know, as he, as he became more part of our family, I could get to know him and live with him, and that. You know, I figured that, you know, he's going to be with us for a while. So I figured, you know, we might as well be friends. So from a seven year old to a 13 year old, you're winning titles with him. When you're in the ring with Teddy Spencer, I know that Teddy looks to you for guidance and direction. So what does that mean to you when you know that Teddy's learning from you? How important does that make you feel? Um, it makes me feel really good. It makes me feel like I'm a part of his life and he's a part of my life and that together we are living in a life together. You talk about being part of each other's lives. Your mom said you guys are best of friends. What are the some of, some of the things that you guys do together outside of the ring in the home? What's your relationship like? I come home after school and Teddy's in my room and he's waiting for me and I say hi to him. And then he'll come out in the uh, living room and spend time with me and I'll play with him and I'll maybe take him to the hill. And then at night he'll come back into my room where he lives and you know he'll, he'll sleep on my bed and he gets first choice of the bed too, but the life of a dog. <laughs> he gets first choice of the bed, that's awesome. Now your mom said after Orlando that you have no, no issues public speaking because you feel like, hey, I, you know, I did Orlando, I can do this. So what is your confidence level like? How has it grown when you guys are in the ring together? Um, it, it's grown really well. It used to be when the first time I went in the ring, I was extremely unconfident and felt like, you know, this is going to be a complete failure and that, you know, everything from this point on is not going to work and then it just you know teddy understood and forgave me at several points and so we just became more part of a team we learned from each other and each other's mistakes and so eventually it led up to orlando and we went and we took second place so it's grown really well you say you learn from each other what is the most important thing spencer that you've learned from teddy I've learned from Teddy that never to that never to let your fear be take over you and to be more in your life than anything else. And he's taught me that, you know, if you're scared of something and that if you work to it you can overcome that and you know, sometimes like Teddy, it can turn out to be your best friend. Aww. That's a great story. Thank you so much. Congratulations and thank you, Spencer, Terry, and Teddy. Where is Chester walking today? Well, since we're featuring dogs who dazzle, Chester takes a trip to the bright lights of New York City in the heart of dazzling Times Square. He even made a few friends along the way. Let's take a look. <laughs>
Chester on the move and some new friends, as you saw now for the top 10 confirmation dog rankings who dazzled this month. Starting with number 10 is Soul, who moves back into the top 10 after dropping out in April. His pointer from Minnesota. King, a wire fox terrier from Rialto, California, takes the number nine spot. A Pekingese by the name of Bernie gets the eighth spot. Nick and Akita from Gilroy, California, number seven. Cheers for Slick, who moves up two places from number eight to number six. Slick is a border collie from Pennsylvania. Number five is Biggie, a pug from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. While hailing from Santa Barbara, California, in fourth is the French Bulldog named Princeton. And Wilma the Boxer from Texas makes the biggest move of the month, going from number six to number three. This is the highest Wilma has been ranked. Once again, Elsa, the old English sheepdog from Colorado Springs, the number two dog in America. And in a tight race with the highest ranking dog in America, that goes to Grant, the Black Cocker Spaniel from Knoxville, Tennessee. Congrats to all. I'm Sam Ryan. Thanks for joining me today. And thank you to my co-host, Bodie. Can you say goodbye, Bodie? <coughs> yes. <coughs> Good boy. We'll be back in two weeks, but next Wednesday, we'll be running a marathon of our best AKC live shows for you. Be sure to download AKC TV on Roku and Apple TV and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. AKC TV, it's Good Dog TV. And we leave you with our Good Dog Moment of the Week, AKC TV's The Best Thing About My Dog. Feel free to share the best thing about your dog at AKC TV slash submit, and we may do this to it. Um, I would say one of the funniest things about him that I think people love is the way he walks. And he waddles and he has his booty shake and you kind of see his butt wiggle back and forth. So whenever we find a uh, like a song that, that has like a booty reference or anything, we, we take a video, we try to match up that song with, with him walking. Yeah, I think people are pretty obsessed with Corgi butts. That's like a known thing. There's lots of hashtags like Corgi butts drive me nuts. I actually have a mug that says that that somebody bought me. Furniture provided by the dog-friendly Mitchell Gold and Bob Williams. Comfort for all.